All right then, so we've deployed our application now to Vercel and we can see it right here and it's all working. But currently, if we were to add new content or change content in Contentful and then visit our hosted website, it won't pick up that new change because our site has already been built by Vercel when we deployed it. And these right here, these are just all static pages based on that build. So it only shows the data that was present on Contentful at the time of building. So in order to have our new data show, we'd have to manually rebuild and redeploy the application. Now you can do that by pushing to GitHub again and merging with the main branch. Then Vercel will automatically pick up on that and redeploy the application and rebuild it. However, that can become problematic if you're adding content quite frequently. You don't always want to be manually rebuilding the website every time you add in new content or change content in Contentful. So one solution to this is by using a feature called incremental static regeneration in Next.js. So incremental static regeneration is when Next.js automatically generates a new page or regenerates an existing page in the background if content is added or changed in our data source. In our case, that would be in Contentful. So the way this works might seem a little strange at first, but once you get your head around it, it all makes sense. So the way it does work is as follows. Imagine we already have our site deployed to the cell listing our different recipes. Now imagine then we make a change to a single recipe on Contentful, for example, the Marmite stew. Now when this happens, it doesn't directly trigger our application to regenerate that recipe page or any page which uses that data. However, what it will do is if I was to visit that recipe page in the browser, the regeneration process will begin. So when I hit that page in the browser, Next.js will start to perform a background check. At this point, it's going to reach out to our contentful data to see if this page data has changed since the last build. And if it has, then it will retrieve this data and in the background regenerate this static page on the fly. Now, we won't see any change in the browser while it does this. It's all done in the background and we're still going to see the old content. However, because in the background, a new version of the static page has been generated. If the data was changed, then the next time someone visits the page, they will see the up to date content. So if you refreshed at this point, then you'd get the latest version of the page. So this is the theory behind incremental static regeneration, and we have to add it to our application on a page by page basis so that if we wanted to, some pages can have this feature and others don't have to have it. So then you only need to add it to the parts of your website where the content may change frequently. So let's give this a whirl in our project. So to implement this feature is pretty simple. All we need to do is open up our component. In our case, it's going to be the slow component to begin with. This is the recipe detail page. And we're going to go down to where we return the props inside get static props. Now, as well as returning the props property, we can also add on a revalidate property right here. And then we set this to be a number in seconds. So this number represents the time in seconds and basically says how often at most Next.js can check for content updates and regenerate a page. So if I was to put 10 here, for example, it means that if I come to this page initially, Next is going to query our data for updates. However, if someone else or me again comes to this page again within 10 seconds of that, then it won't query it again. Only after a 10 second wait will it try again. So this is how you can limit how often Next.js is going to hit your content storage. So obviously for content that changes very, very frequently, this number is going to be lower than if your content changes less frequently. So what we're going to do is just set it to one for the sake of this tutorial, meaning it can revalidate at most every one second. And again, it doesn't mean it's going to keep on revalidating in the background all the time, every second. It just means at most every one second. And it depends on users visiting the page for it to trigger that revalidation. OK, so I'm also going to do the same thing for the index page. So let me save this and then go to index. And then after the props, I'm going to paste this in down here. Oops, I didn't copy it. So let's write it out. Revalidate. 
and then one. And I'm doing it in this page as well, because remember, we're listing the recipes on the home page as well. So if we make a change to one of them, maybe the title or the cooking time, we need the home page to regenerate if we visit that as well. So I'm going to save this and that's all there is to it. Now all we need to do is push this up to our main branch on GitHub to trigger a redeploy and a rebuild on Vercel. So let's do that. I'm going to say git add all changes and then I'm going to say git commit m and we'll say isr for incremental static regeneration and then press enter. Then I'm going to push this. So git push origin main like so and once this is done this is going to trigger a rebuild and redeploy in Vercel. so if we take a look at this over here i'm just going to refresh this deployments page and we can see another one now is being built okay so once that's done i'm going to click on this deployment and then i'm going to visit it in the browser so we can see this right here so nothing's changed everything still works now, what I'm going to do is go to Contentful now, and I'm just going to change one of these recipes, maybe change the cooking time of the Marmite Skewer. So, if I go over here and click on this, and then scroll down to the cooking time, I'm going to change this to 30, and I'm going to publish the changes. So, with me publishing those changes, it's not going to trigger a rebuild. So, if I refresh once over here, it's not going to show the updated time. But once I refresh and next gives me this page in the background, it's going to then perform that background check to refetch the data and if it needs to rebuild the page. So on first refresh, nothing should change and it doesn't. We can see nothing changes. But if I refresh again now, we can see now it changes to 30 minutes. So now we get that fresh static page. OK, so let's try another example. If I open this Marmite potatoes right here. I'm going to change the cooking time of this as well. So let me go back to contentful and back to content, go into Marmite potatoes and then scroll down. We'll just change this to 40, publish those changes. And then if we go back over here again, if I refresh once, we're not going to get that new time because it's not rebuilt the page yet. But once I refresh, it's going to trigger in the background next to refetch the data and rebuild the page so that if I refresh again now, it should show that change and it does. Awesome. Now, there is still one small problem with this. Imagine I add in a new recipe. So let me go back to Contentful and add in a dummy recipe. I'm just going to call this ABC. doesn't really matter what it's called. Add any old media. So a thumbnail, first of all and then a featured image. So this one and then the ingredients doesn't really matter. And then cooking time, 10 minutes, blah, blah, blah. The content doesn't matter. I just want to demonstrate what happens when we add a new recipe. If I was to publish this now, the slug for this is just ABC, right? So if I now go to forward slash recipes, forward slash ABC, Watch what happens. Well, I get a 404 page, right? So it doesn't show that new recipe. Now, if I go to the home page, let me just go to the home page. We can see that new recipe now, and it's on the home page. But when we try to go to this, we get the 404. So although this is working in terms of the content is showing on this home page, when we add new contents, Next is not actually creating or generating a new page. So all incremental static regeneration does is regenerate pages that already exist. So it's not generating a new page based on new content. And we need a way to do that. And to do that, we're going to use a fallback page, which is basically a placeholder page while Next.js fetches the data and generates a new page for us in the background for cases like this. And we'll do that in the next video.